The idea that history repeats itself is widespread. Whenever something happens, people go looking in search of parallel examples from history and usually find some. We can't see the future, so looking back at the past is the only thing we can do after all. But how useful is this way of thinking? Ancient Western thinkers who wrote about this concept were more concerned with the cosmological than the sociological. They didn't really think of things in terms of history, but in terms of the divine. There was a metaphysical order to the universe, and everything would simply repeat as planned. Ancient Eastern culture had a somewhat similar concept known as the Mandate of Heaven. This said that any unjust ruler would always lose the support of heaven and end up being overthrown. This would happen again and again, forever, on a cycle, regardless of what ruler it was or where they were. You can see the beginnings of the modern notion of history repeating itself in these ancient ideas. Perhaps the most popular thing to look back on today in the search for historical parallels to today's world is the Roman Empire. There is an endless amount of papers, articles, videos, and podcasts comparing America to Rome and trying to predict what's going to happen to us next. What's interesting is that the Romans were doing the exact same thing. Dionysius of Halicarnassus, a Roman historian, wrote about how Rome was far superior to her predecessors, Assyria, Persia, and Macedonia. But he also wrote about how Rome was decaying and would eventually fall apart. The Romans themselves had a plethora of dead empires to look back on after all, so it was only natural that they would suspect that their time in the sun wouldn't last forever. A few hundred years later, then what, the pinnacle of the Roman Empire? Zosimus, the historian, expanded on this idea even further. He was living in Constantinople and could clearly see that the writing was on the wall for Rome. By that time, Rome was divided into a western and an eastern half, and Zosimus wrote that empires fell because of a lack of internal unity. He compared the Rome of his time to ancient Greece and Macedon, which were the most relevant examples he had to look back on. Rome, Greece, and Macedon had all grown as a result of having to consolidate against the threat of an external enemy. Rome had responded to the threat of Hannibal at Cannae and become the biggest power in the region in just a few decades. But this domination led to Rome's aristocracy being replaced by an imperium and eventual descent into tyranny. Zosimus saw parallels of this same process in their Greek predecessors. The empire flip-flopped between competent tyrants and tyrants like Caligula, who were more concerned with doing utterly insane things for fun. Zosimus saw history repeating itself in broad strokes in Rome's decay. Ancient writers also liked to compare civilizations to people. They made an analogy between an individual's life cycle and the developments of a body politic. Many highly influential thinkers embraced this way of viewing things, including Cicero, Seneca, Marcellinus, and Aristotle. All of these people thought that just like a person is born, grows up, and then dies, so does a civilization. This metaphor would stick around for a long time, showing up later in the works of 19th century philosophers like Herbert Spencer and Emile Durkheim. Machiavelli, who is often seen as the father of political science, subscribed to the idea that history repeated itself. He wrote that whoever considers the past and the present will readily observe that all cities and all peoples ever have been animated by the same desires and the same passions, so that it is easy, by diligent study of the past, to foresee what is likely to happen in the future in any republic. Machiavelli believed that this happened because political effectiveness led to peace, but that peace in turn led to people becoming lazy. This laziness then led to disorder and ruin, which began the cycle again. From this ruin would eventually come a new order, glory, and good fortune. Machiavelli thought that human nature was highly stable, and thus you could formulate rules of political behavior around it because it wouldn't change. The medieval Islamic world has their own version of this same basic idea. A scholar named Ibn Khaldun wrote in the late 14th century that the empires of the Middle East all followed the same pattern. First, nomadic tribes became united by something called asabiyah, which roughly translates to social solidarity. Their superior cohesion leads them to being able to defeat urban dwellers in battle. They conquer the towns and create their own new regimes. But after a few generations of being urbanites themselves, they lose their asabiyah and end up becoming corrupted by luxury and leisure. They sit around trying out different spices all day instead of training to shoot arrows on horseback. The ruler, now unable to rely on strong warriors for defense, has to raise taxes to pay for other kinds of soldiers. This leads to further problems and eventually the state falls apart. Most people who think that history repeats itself probably haven't read a bunch of stuff written by any of these guys. They have simply observed that there are clearly instances where history has repeated itself. It is easy to find major events for which there are very close parallels all throughout the course of human history. Cortez's conquest of the Aztec Empire in 1519 was helped along by the fact that the natives thought he might be their god Quetzalcoatl, who they had predicted would return that very year. In 1778, the same thing happened to James Cook when he went to Hawaii. He happened to land during the annual Makahiki festival honoring the god Lono, who the natives thought must have been James Cook. 
In 1812, Napoleon Bonaparte, who was born a Corsican outsider, was woefully unprepared for an extended winter campaign. But he invaded the Russian Empire anyway, completely failed, and his empire fell apart as a result. In 1941, Adolf Hitler, who was born an Austrian outsider, was similarly unprepared. He attempted to invade Russia in the winter anyway, and the Third Reich fell apart. Interestingly enough, Hitler, who enjoyed reading history, was well aware of Napoleon's failed campaign. However, he was convinced that he would succeed where Napoleon had failed. Russia is not the only country whose history of failed invasions seems to lend itself to the idea that history repeats itself. Afghanistan, the so-called graveyard of empires, has been a target for longer than it has even been an official country. All foreign armies who have invaded Afghanistan have ended up making a full military withdrawal by the end of the conflict, and there have been a lot of foreign armies that have tried. Several major powers throughout history have attempted to invade Afghanistan and maintain a stable and permanent rule. All have failed. The British Empire made a couple of attempts in the 19th century. Although they had the advantage of controlling nearby India, both wars ended disastrously. The Soviet Union made their attempt in the 1980s. They tried to occupy Afghanistan for 10 years before eventually realizing that it couldn't be done. The United States tried to turn Afghanistan into a Western, liberal democracy for twice as long before finally accepting that it was impossible. Ancient empires such as the Persians, Arabs, and Mongols also tried to rule the region. Why none of these groups ever thought to look back and learn from history is impossible to know. George Santayana wrote that those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. It is difficult to say whether or not people learn from the past. Could it be that we have avoided all kinds of calamities by looking back at history? How would we know if we had or not? For example, it would be easy to find out how many students dropped out of a class because it was too hard. But it would be harder to find out how many students never signed up for the class because they knew it would be too hard. They course corrected early and avoided the problem entirely. How can we identify moments in history where people took the right course of action based on past events? It's a difficult thing to measure. It is also difficult to learn from history, even if it does repeat itself in certain ways. Even with thousands of years of history to look back on, the future remains nearly impossible to predict most of the time. Just think about the biggest events of recent history, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the COVID pandemic, and the election of Donald Trump. These things were not predicted, at least by the majority of intellectuals. That being said, the reason that there does appear to be some repeatability to history is because while circumstances change, human nature remains the same. Thucydides made this observation 2,400 years ago when he wrote, Events of future history will be of the same nature, or nearly so, as the history of the past, so long as men are men. People are the same today as they have always been, but the world has changed around them. We are the common thread throughout all of history. Thucydides would probably have his mind blown if he could visit the present and see the internet and the space station, but he and all the other people in the past are much more similar to us than we often realize. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.